Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is David. Today I'm going to show you how to build this amazing fashion website landing page using purely HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. That's right, purely HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. No third-party libraries is incurred in this project. So when you look at this project, and you can hover on the banner page, you will see that the image and the background only show when you hover on a certain section on the banner page. And when you click on that section, it actually toggles between them. So this might click on the second one, only the second one gets to show, and the font color gets to change. I click on the third one, the initial two disappear, and the third one gets to show. Same for the last one. So it's not only this uh, background change applies to the hover effect, but also applies to the click on events. And also amazingly, when you click on any of the individual button, it'll show you a sliding door bendable effects and show up the content in the middle, okay? Uh, it's like the same kind of the retail shop that you see um, when you go shopping. You will see all of those retail shops have those bendable sliding door on and off. So this one have that kind of effect as well. And you close it off, that one goes away. Activate the second one, open it up, and that one gets to show. As you can see, the text was here, 100% uh, dynamic, according to the one that I click on. So I close off this one, activate the third one. This one's for trousers and shorts. If I click on it, and this one goes to trousers and shorts, it's 100% dynamic, okay? So I'm going to show you how to create this bendable sliding door effect using purely vanilla JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And also amazingly, not only this one works on the full screen, if we turn on the mobile size, this one works on the mobile size as well. It's a fully responsible landing page. On the mobile page, instead of demonstrating the full section horizontally, this one shows the full parts of the banner page vertically. And also they are clickable as well. And also the button works in a vertical way instead of a horizontal way. This is also the sliding door bendable effects. It's like a, uh, a bendable window goes up and down. So this one gets to show in the middle and you can close that off change to the next one, turn it on, turn it off. Amazingly cool, right? So it's a, uh, a creative simple project, but I think this is a really interesting to show you how to build something like this using the purely, the very traditional way of creating things uh, instead of incurring any third party libraries, which is very heavy, but this one we, I used uh, the purely HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript, nothing else. If you are very interested in this project, I want to code along with me, please subscribe my ch channel and uh, let's go ahead and build it now. So to quickly start off this project, you just need to uh, create an empty folder on any of your directories in your computer and then drag that folder into your code editor. I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code, but you could use any one you prefer. So once you get in, you will have that empty folder there, which is uh, named to the name you want to name it. And we're just going to create a couple of files and folders inside this folder. So the first thing we want to do is to create a index.html file that will load everything for us. And then we're going to create a folder called CSS which used it to contain our styling file. And inside it, we'll create a file called styles.css, or singular style, and another folder called js to contain our JavaScript file. And inside that file, we're just going to create a, a one called main.js. However, this one, uh, the name of the file are 100% up to you. So you could uh, use anything you feel comfortable with. And then the last folder we're going to do is the image folder, because we do have four images uh, in the project. So we just use that to store all the images. So once we have that done, we have done the, the project folder structure and going back to our index.html files. And here, we're just gonna create a boilerplate for us to start off. Uh, there's a shortcut inside the Visual Studio Code to create a boilerplate for the web project. You just need to key in the exclamation mark on your keyboard and then hit tab. It'll create that document HTML boilerplate for you straight away instead of typing in all of these things uh, manually. And the next thing we want to do is that you can change the title here if you want to uh, make the project more specific. So what we can tap in is that uh, it's a fashion website and landing page or hero section. And down here, above here, uh, we want to link in the project, uh, the CSS file we have just created because we're going to use it. And you just hit uh, link and you tap. and we're just going to say uh, create a relationship. It's going to be a uh, style sheet. And after that, we're just going to put in the ref, h ref, and that's going to be period slash. Basically, means that same folding directory. And then going to CSS, tap that one in, and then you just want to close off that angle bracket in the end. So that way, you're linking your CSS files. Anything you're writing here will be applied to this document. 
And also one more thing you probably want to do is to link in that main.js file. Um, sometimes you can do this when, when it comes to use that file, but it's a good habit to have everything linked up at the right beginning. Otherwise, later on, when you write that file, you see this page is not working. You're just wondering, there's nothing wrong with my CSS file and or my JavaScript file. Why the page is not working? That's because you forgot to link them in at the very upfront. So here I'll just say script, and then we put in the source. So we link in the, it's the same directory in a JS folder, tab in the main.js file, and then you close that angle brackets. Oops, this is uh, not a single one. So we just close that angle brackets by typing in script. Yeah, so that's the opening and closing script tag uh, to wrap your JavaScript file. All right, so that's pretty much uh, how we set up the structure. And then uh, in the body, what we're going to do for, for testing for now, just turn the hey in a h1 and say um, hello. Let's see if this works. And to start off this project on your browser, the easiest way is to use that uh, go alive function in your Visual Studio code. So we're just hitting that button. And it will create a uh, new file for us. And let's just move on to the browser to see. Yeah, this is the new one that I just created. Um, it should be located on your routes, a local host 5000 uh, and 500. Um, typically, that's going to be the routes. And you will see the hello world is showing at the top corner, uh, which is the one we just type in. And the next step is that uh, instead of start to typing straight away, we're going to do some generic setting in the starting file. What I will do, I will create a, uh, a new window to parallel these things. So close that off. So all the CSS will be written over here. And you will see once I write the new CSS file, how the main thing gets to change on the browser, right? So in our CSS file, I want to show you the fonts that I use in this project. And that's going to be two different things, basically. So one, you need to go to Google Fonts to find this font. And also, you probably want to use the Roboto. So there's two fonts that we used. And once you have that, which is pretty much imported, this is from the Google Fonts. Okay, we save the file. And also, the next setting you want to do, you want to set up some generic setting for the whole page. So we're using that uh, this approach, make a whole page setting to margin to zero, padding to zero, and a box sizing border box. You save that file, and then you're going back to the browser, you will see the differences between this one and the previous one is that the hello world touch very tightly to the top left corner. Previously, there was a natural margin and padding that was given by the HTMLs, but now that thing has been uh, removed away. So the next thing we want to do is to set up the root colors for this project, because we do have full section in our banner area. And that full colors is just to define the background color of those full sections. So these are the hex code. And the primary color is a sort of like a blue and cyan code. And this is like a pink red code. It's like a green one. It's like the orange one, orange to brown code. So make them slightly darker because at the end of the day, you're going to show the text words in white on top of this background color. If you make this color too bright or too um, light, and probably it's not going to give you sufficient color contrast when it comes to showing text font. Okay, so we save that. We have our root, root color. Later on, when you want to uh, um, refer to any color you use, you can refer to this root color straight away using this variable name instead of typing in hard coding this uh, hex code. And if you change your mind at the end of the stage, you want to change it to a different color, you just need to simply amend the root color over here instead of changing everywhere on your CSS file uh, that used that color before. Okay. And for the entire body, what I'm going to do, also give the body a background color white, even though it's already white here. But we just want to specifically define it. And also make sure that for the entire body, unless otherwise mentioned, we're going to use this um, Roboto as a family font. Okay. So we have that done. Now let's move back to the uh, index file. We leave it that for now. So over here, what we want to do is that first thing, if you look at a page, we want to create a header on the right top. And then after we build a header, we're going to create a banner. So the, the first job is the header. And let's look at the original project. What does the header con uh, contains? It contains a logo and it contains a search bar. So that's a very simple one. Somebody said that your banner does not have the navigation. But don't you notice that the navigation is the banner content? This is the navigation. We have the first navigation to hat and sunglasses, the second navigation to shirts and jackets, third one is the trousers and shorts, and the last navigation is other accessories. So this is like an expansion. Instead of doing the navigation by in a very traditional way, on the bottom, on the side, or down the bottom, I do it in the banner 
body part. Okay, so this is like a, a new creative way of doing your navigation. For fashion stores, you want to give the user a very attractive looking when it comes to your website, so they know exactly where to go. And when they look at the big navigation, they want to purchase some trousers. They will go to trousers straight away and click on it. And then it will open up the door for them and then lead them to the next action. Okay, that's the design logic. So let's build a header first. Going back to our code editor, we delete that one. And here we're just going to say header using the header tag. So inside the header tag, we're going to create an anchor tag and we're going to give a name of logo tab. So this one, we're just going to put a hash in it, or oh, sorry, a slash in it, because it's going to lead us back to the home page. And here you can put in your specific brand name if you have one, or you have a brand name image that you want to load it here. You can also put it in. But so far, just make it simple, put in logo. And that's the first line. And the second line here, we're going to create that search bar, which is div. I give a class name of search tab. Inside here, we're going to put in the input. So that's going to be a type of text. And then on the placeholder, we're just going to say search. Okay, that's it. And the last one I want to put in is probably the icon that can show the zoom in and the zoom out the search glasses. So what I would do in this project, I will use a bootstrap icon uh, to supply those uh, icon I'm going to use. So we're just going to quickly jump to the bootstrap icon website. This is the one. And you just type in the bootstrap icon in Google and you will find this one on the first result. And here you just scroll down a bit. Down here, it will show you that link, the CDN thing, because we are building using vanilla JavaScript and HTML. And so we do not touch those uh, package manager. We use that CDN. And the CDN, the link one is the one you're targeting at. You just click on the copy button to copy that on your clipboard. And going back to your uh, code editor, you want to put this one before your own customized CSS files. And you want to paste it here. Okay. And normally, um, the order of the file does matter. Uh, when it comes to this traditional way of building a website. The one that comes later will be eventually applied because the one that comes later will override the one that comes earlier. Okay, So you want to put your customized CSS file at the, at the end of all the files. And this one should be put before that one. Saved it. So now we can access all the fonts inside the bootstrap icon. Okay, So we're going back to the same page. And here we're just going to type in search. The find the zoom in and zoom out glasses, this one, the search glasses, copy that, going back to the editor, and then we put it below that uh, input search box. Okay, so now we have finalized the outline of our search. We're going back to the browser, you'll see the logo is there, the search box is there, and the bootstrap icon uh, zoom in glasses is there as well. Okay, so it pretty much that's our header. We have the header just contain all of those stuff. The next thing I want to do is to uh, build the headers. CSS over here, so to make it look decent and nicer. And then we're just going to give a bit of a um, comma, comments, and we'll say that uh, for the header, what we can do here, I want to make sure the header is sitting on the top all, of, all the way through instead of moving uh, while I'm scrolling to other pages. So I want to make the position absolute. The position absolute um, will allow the element, the DOM element, to be located to the specific location you want it to. Okay? And I want to make sure it sits right at the top. So we'll give it a top zero. That means that it sits um, at the far top. And I also want to make sure it goes to the far left. So left is zero. And I want to make sure it takes the whole width of the screen. So I give the screen width of 100%. Oops. And then I want to make sure that uh, if you save this, you will see that pretty much is no big change because we haven't set up the layout yet. We want them to spread out on two ends, right? The logo should be uh, sitting on the left hand side, while the search bar should be on the right hand side. So to do that, we're going to use that uh, flex display. So we say display flex to make them spread out. Soon as you save that, you will see something's going to happen. They are already located uh, on sides of each other instead of uh, vertically. And then we want them to uh, spread out using that justify content space between. The space between allow them to sit on the two end. And vertically, we want them to align in the center. Okay, so now if you save it and going back, you will see the logo is sitting at the the far left, and the search bar is going to the far right. We've done a job. And on the next line, we want to say padding. 
because now it's too narrow. We want them to uh, have certain paddings. And vertically, we want them to have a padding of 30%, a 30 pixels. And horizontally, we want them to have a, a padding on the left and right to have a 50 pixels. If you save that, and going back, you will see, now there's a bit of a padding on the top and left and right, okay? It looks all decent. And the last step, and this is necessary, because you want to make sure that your header always shows on the top of all elements. Nothing can override it, nothing can overflow it. So we give a Z index of 1000. It doesn't matter what number you give, just make sure that uh, this number you give, the higher and the, the number, um, the more likely the element will be sitting on the top of all other elements. Okay, so we give it a highest the number of the Z index to make sure the header is sitting on the, the top of all the DOM elements. Later on, if you have other DOM elements, you can give them a, a Z index, maybe 900, 800, or 500 to make sure they all sit below the header, okay? So that's what we're gonna do to the header general setting. And now if you look at the logo, it's not looking correct because it has the underlines and the font is too small, color is incorrect. So what I wanna do to the logo, and we're just gonna write a CSS for it because we give a class name of logo. So now we're using that uh, selector period logo to find that class of the elements on the DOM. Uh, for the font family, uh, the logo one, I want to use the one that we mentioned in the Google fonts. So if you look at here, you browse to, which is this one that I want to apply to the logo. So here I'm just gonna say font family, that one, cursive, okay? Very simple. And for the font size, we're just gonna give it a 40 pixels to make it look slightly larger. The font color so far, because we have a, a, a white background, so I want to have a color contrast. So the color is supposed to be a black color font. And then we give a, a letter spacing of two speed pixels. And after that, you want to make sure your font weight to be a bit of a thicker, 800. That's the thickest thing could ever go. And we want to remove that underline of the text. So we say text declaration, none. And also we want to turn it into uppercase. So we'll say text transform, go uppercase. And later on, if we want to apply some animations to the logo, we want to make sure that animation have a transition time of half second. So we say that the transition half second. So once all of those done, and you're going back to your browser, you will see that logo looks much decent and nicer, right? Cool. So we have the logo done. The next one I want to show is that uh, the search bar. So down here, we say search. Because in this part, we create a div and give the class name of search. So I use a period slash to find that DOM element. And inside here, we say position relevant. And we give a certain width of 300 pixels. And we give a certain height of 40 pixels. And you want to make sure that background of the search goes to white. The white color is F. And then you want to make sure it has a certain border radius of 20 pixels, okay? So once you have that done, and then going back, you will see nothing changed to the uh, input box because we haven't defined it yet, but it looks already slightly better. And um, once we have that, we're going to the, the child element inside a search, and then we can say search input. That's how you access the child element. You, you fetch the parent class, and then you go inside it. So we want to put to be a position of absolute. We wanted to make sure it's a left zero and the top zero. Um, the CSS syntax that I want to say here is that if you define something absolute, that thing is going to be wrapped uh, inside the parent component, the first parent component where you have the position of relative. So say, for example, here, I place the position relative to the parent's class search and the child class input inside search will be referring to the position of uh, the parent class search. Okay, so this left zero and the top zero will be referring to the position of that search. If I do not put the position relative here, this left and top zero will be referring to the super parent class, which is the header, and that is incorrect. So whenever you want to make sure that position absolute working all properly, you have to make sure it's a uh, first parent class have a position of relative or position absolute or position fixed have some sort of a position. So it's a child. You, when you're using that position absolute, we'll be referring to as a parent's position, okay? So we have that done, and then we want to make sure we have a width of 100%. That'll take the whole width, not the whole width of the screen, but the whole width of the parent's class, which is the 300 pixel, because we have applied the position relative and position absolute, so this one is now referring to the search only. 
and we want to make sure it takes the whole height as well, 100%. And the color of uh, black, oops, missing one. So we want to make sure it has that background color of transparent. And we want to make sure, normally the input box will have a border. If you look at it now, it has a border. So but we do not need that border. So we want to make sure the border is gone. So we say border none. And normally the input box will have an outline as well. So we remove that by saying outline none. This is uh, just a typical uh, CSS designing uh, strategy. So once you're in um, a web development career for a long time, this thing, uh, all of this code and this way of handling DOM element will be whipped into your brain. So you, you, you won't be able to forget them. And we want to make sure it has the same border radius as its parent component of 20 pixels. And we want to turn all the text to uppercase. So text transform uppercase. And also the most important thing, we want to make sure it has a correct padding. And this means the top, right, bottom, left, okay? So this four means that you want to set a four different paddings on each top, right, bottom, left. So this is top, right, bottom, left. So we have a different padding. And then down the end, if we save it, going back to see, it's not very um, clear um, outstanding for that input. So far it's hidden away. And that is because the way I want to show it is not using a border, is to use the box shadow. A box shadow is just a shadow around it um, to make sure it stands out. So that's horizontally, vertically, I give them a 30 pixels shadow and you have to define a color. I'm using RGBA because the color is going to be a semi-transparent one. So we want to use the black color for the box shadow, but not the pure black. We use a sort of a transparent black, give them a transparency. This is the opacity, okay, 30% opacity. And then going back, you will see that box shadow actually make sure the search bar stand out in a very beautiful way, okay? so. There's a lot of ways to make things stand out from the DOM and make them look uh, uh, look like a isolated item instead of just using the border. The border sometimes is really ugly. And we have noticed that some things is incorrect. The uh, one thing is that um, the color, while the color is a like that, it's okay, it's not bad, but the, the, the zoom icon is not correct. So what we want to do is that define a bit for the search. In the search, we have this icon. So we say search I. We want to make sure that position goes to absolute as well. I we want to make sure it sits in the middle vertically. So you have to be adjust a bit of a down. And the way to do that, we just want to want it to uh, move away from the top by 50 pixels. If you save it, you will see this one goes further down. The reason is because it will count from the top of the elements. It moves down 50 pixels has no problem, but it will count that 50 pixels from the top of the element. To, mo to move it back to the central, we have to move the item itself by another 50 pixels. So here we're just gonna say, transform. Transform means that I want to move myself. Translate Y vertically, that means vertically. By 50, minus 50 pixels means um, I want to move myself back by 50%, okay? So in that way, if you're going back, that thing sits right in the middle, okay? So this uh, strategy normally are gonna be combined together. So you move it to the middle of the page, and then you want to adjust yourself back by 50%. And then we want to make sure that uh, it goes, uh, it has a bit of padding uh, to the left as well. So we say left 10%. And then we're gonna have a padding to right of 10% as well. And then we we'll want to make sure the color of it is black. Oops, I forgot the hyphen, uh, the hash. And then we want to make sure it has a border to right only, border to right only, not the entire border, okay? Give them a one pixel border solid, and we want to make sure the color is uh, black. Save it. And now if you're going back, you will see that thing sits at the right position and it has a border that cut off between the search and actual input text box. If you type in, there's nothing wrong with it. And uh, the color of the placeholder, we probably want to make it a black as well because that will be matching the remaining stuff. So what I will do here is that I will say search input colon colon placeholder tab. I just want to make sure the color goes to black as well. 
Okay, so now I've gone back to the browser. You will see it's all perfectly aligned, and also the colors correct with this beautiful box shadow to make sure it stand out from the DOM. Okay, right. We have pretty much done the header part. That's it. Um, the next thing I want to start off is going to be the uh, the banner. So here we're just going to create a new section, a new part. So we're probably going to leave some comments to make sure this one goes all correct. That's the header part. Comment it out. So now I'm going to uh, give this uh, banner hero part. A hero part or the banner part is the key part of the web. Uh, if you have this thing done correctly or amazingly, the remaining page is not going to be that bad. But if you lose the attraction of the banner part, um, doesn't matter how beautiful you are in terms of building the rest of the page, it wouldn't look good. So in here, we're just going to create a new DOM called the banner. So this new div banner. And think about, look at the original one. In the banner, it's been divided into four sections or four parts. The first part is about our first navigation, the second part, third part, and fourth part. So what we're going to do is that we're going to um, create different banner sections for each of those as well, because it's eventually all the content and images is going to be wrapped inside that specific banner section. Okay, So let's do it here. We will say div dot give a name banner section and tab. So we're going to have four of these. So I'm just going to copy that. OK, so now we have four banner sections. And then this is a general class name that will apply all of them because we do have some general settings for the banner section. And also, we want to have a specific class name for each of each of them. So the first one, I'm going to give a 1. This is going to be a 2, 3, 4. OK, so now we have a 1, 2, 3, 4 for different section. And inside each one, uh, let's see what's contained. One is the background image. The other thing is the background color. And then we're going to have to define the background text and button. All right? so this is a couple of things. So inside here, what I will do, I will take all the image that I have uh, prepared for you. And I will leave that image link inside the description if you want to uh, uh, rebuild this project like me. So drag in those uh, four images that I have prepared for each section. Okay, so This is another four images. And I'm just going to link one of the image in as a background image here. So we say image tab, the source period slash, we're going to the images folder. Um, and then I'm going to uh, link in the girl one PNG image. And then save. Close that off. The next part. So the next thing we want to do is that uh, we create a content, div.content. And inside that content, we're going to put in our uh, um, Banner section title. So the first one is going to be hat, percent, and the sunglasses. Okay. So after that, what we're going to have is a button, is a section button, which is this one, the arrow sec the arrow button. So the image there already. We say the anchor tag, give the a name called banner, banner button, and that's going to be a uh, a hash. And inside here, we got no text words, but we do have an icon. So we're going back to the Bootstrap icon. And in icon, we found an arrow. Let's see if uh, right can find us that one. Yeah, that one. We need that uh, right arrow, the long one. Copy it. Going back, put it over here. OK, so we've done that. And also, we want to give sure, make sure this one has a data target. Because later on, if you look at the original one, you click on it, it opened up the sliding bendable door and show up the content in the middle. And the title of that content matches the title of that navigation. And the way to do so is that we have to make sure this button point to something specifically instead of a general one. OK, so we're going back to here. We give another property of that tag. This is a, your own customized property, not the, not the built in one. You can name it anything you want. Uh, we say data target. And that one's going to be equal to, let's say, banner content one. So banner content one, later on, we'll have to the, the second the second section, we will say that banner content two. So each one will have a data target accordingly. All right. So now if we're going back to the browser, we'll see that all elements are there. But it's uh, not looking very beautiful. And later on, when we set up the CSS, it will be much better. 
So now we have the first section. So the next thing I want to do is that I will copy and paste the same sort of thing to the remaining section, which is the 2, 3, and 4, except that we're going to change the background image and all the stuff. But this will save us a heap of time of, uh, of typing. So the second one I put in. And here I want to change the image to girl 3 and change the title as well. The second one is going to be shirt and jacket. All right. So and I also change the target to two. Let's see what else we need to change. We change the image. This one's two. And nothing else. Okay. So now I want to apply the same sort of settings to three. And this one, the image is going to be man. Man two. And then I want to put in the new content title, and which is the trousers and shorts. Trousers and shorts. And that one there is going to be three. So remaining stuff are all the same. And then we're going to the last section. We we'll save that. This one's going to be the girl, the girl two. And I want to make sure that title changes to other accessories. And this one, the target, we're going to change it to four. All right. So we have a change all the background images. We have changed the title, the content, and also the target. If we're going back, so far it's all aligning vertically on the left. That's because we haven't done a setting yet. So the next job is that I'm going to go back to our CSS file. And then we're going to say banner. Comment that out. And first thing, I want to do some generic setting for our banner sections instead of uh, go jumping to the specific one straight away. So we're going to define that banner. I'm going to give it a position of relative. The reason why give a position of relative over banner is because later on, we're probably going to have some position absolute elements um, inside the child. So we want to make sure that all the child, child component, the child elements inside the banner referring to the position of the banner instead of uh, referring to the position of body. Okay. So the parents um, elements must to have a position for the child component to refer it to. And we want to make sure that thing take the whole screen size. And I want to make sure that thing had a minimum height of 100% uh, of the vertical screen. That's 100% of the vertical screen minimum height. It, it can't go beyond that, but at least it should be that. And we want to make sure it had a padding. Vertically, it had a padding of zero. But horizontally, it should have a padding of 100 pixels. And we want to make sure it has a background of white. And so far, we want to make sure the overflow is hidden because we do not want anything to jump out of the banner area. If it has any transitions, we want to make sure the transition has a time, apply half second. And the banner should have a display of flex. We want to uh, aligning things vertically and horizontally in a central. The easiest way to do that kind of setting is to use this display flex justify contents center to make sure it aligns horizontally, align item center to make sure it aligns vertically at the center of the page. So the combination of the three line of code will make sure your item sits in the middle, sits in the middle, both vertically and horizontally. Okay. And then after that, we're going back a slight change. And now at least the display flags is all now going horizontally instead of vertically. But alignment is different because we haven't controlled the size of the image and background. So the next thing to do is to uh, get onto our banner section. So let's say banner section. Comment that out. It's a good habit that uh, you leave some light comments while you're coding. So later on, you don't confuse yourself. And then that's going to be banner dash section. Banner section is going to be this one because we create a full banner section of those. And I and now here, I just want to make make sure they have some generic setting for each of them. So this one will have a position of absolute. We want to make sure it sits at the top of zero. That's going to be sitting at the far top. We want to make sure that uh, each section only take one fourth. Okay, that's like a twenty five percent of the page horizontally. So we're going to have a width of twenty five percent. And then we want to make sure it takes the whole vertical screen. So height is going to be 100%. And then we want to make sure when it comes to a transition, it has a transition effects of duration of one second. 
and it's supposed to have that display flex as well. It's like the, the traditional three combination. Align item center, okay. And then you want to have some slight padding all around by 50 pixels. And then you want to make sure that banner section is uh, pointable. When you put a mouse on it, you want to show the pointer effect so the user knows that it can be clicked. Because remember, in our original design, you see, when I hover on it, it changed to a pointer uh, hand. And then that in that way, the user knows this one is clickable. So not only you will allow the background to change when you hover the mouse on it, but also when you click that section specifically, it will stay at that background color. Okay, the background color changes just like how you handle uh, a genuine navigation, except that in our project, the navigation gets expanded to the entire page. Okay, and the uh, last thing that we want, because we're going to have some um, bendable door uh, sliding effects later on, so I want to set up that transform initial states over here. With a transform skew, we're going to use this skew transformation to do that bendable thing. So, so far, we're going to make sure it has no skew effect at all. At all. And the next thing we're going to make sure that it has some. So we have our banner section ready. And if we're going back to our page, and that's all aligning and got uh, squeezed into the middle of the page because we haven't set it up the remaining stuff yet. So the next job is to uh, set up the position of each section. So that's why I give a specific class name after the general class name because for each section, its position is going to be different. Uh, so far, we just set a uh, a generic setting and make sure everything aligns in the middle. That's why you see all the things get uh, crowded in the middle. But uh, specifically, the banner section, oops, the banner section dot one basically means that we're referring to the first one only. That's how you access that DOM element. We want to make sure it has a left of zero. But that one, the first one should be sitting at the far left, which is over here, okay? And the second one, Banner section dot two it should be next to the first one, but by twenty five percent. So this one should be left twenty five percent. So if you do that and then go back, you will see that uh, this one is moving to the left, uh, to the right of the first one, and sitting at the correct position. But the remaining two are not correct yet. So we're just going to keep building this, and we we know that the third one is going to be a uh, left of 50 pixels so they move each element will move by 25 percent by 50 pixels and now let's just finish the last one the last one banner section dot four that one is going to be left by 75 pixels 75 percent so now once we have all of those settings if we're going back you will see uh, even though it still looks ugly, but at least the position of the, the, the banner sections and all the images are correct, okay? They are now sitting at the expected location where we want to put them. All right, the first thing done. And the next thing is that I want to make sure uh, we give a proper uh, proper define to our section image because so far the image looks really, really bad. So we're just going back. Over here we say banner section, all the images, we're going to give a position of absolute. Because you have a position absolute uh, applied to that banner section, so all the child element, when you say position absolute, it will referring to the position of its parent component. So the image is the child component of banner section, right? So when you say position absolute to image, it's going to refer to the position of its parent component, which is the banner section. And that is because we have a set a position to the parent component already. And that's the first thing you must have done. And then inside here, we say top. We want to make sure it take the whole width and it take the whole height. So it's going to be, oops, it's going to be top zero. It's going to be left, left zero. And it's going to take the whole height. 100%. And we want to make sure the width of it, initially, we want to expand the width of it. Later on, I'll show you why. 150. If you look at the original, you can see that uh, this is the, the kind of uh, um, image effects that I designed specifically. For this image will not be containing in its own section. It actually over overrides a bit, overflow a bit to the next section. I did it on purpose. And also, uh, it has a, a slight blurry effect. If you see, if you look at uh, the pink part, the image is very clear. But if you look at uh, the white part, the image is sort of like a blurry. I did it on purpose, okay? So every image will go beyond its boundary and touch a, a slight area of the next section. 
right? This one as well. You can see the man's arm goes beyond its territory and going into the the fourth section as well. Okay, so that'll make sure this image are not looking so stubborn, but a slightly more creative. Okay, and make sure it sits at 150 pixels, 150 percent. We give a set index of 800. And I want to make sure the transition goes to half second if you want to make an animation later on. And that's that. And also, we want to make sure to control the image position and image size, we want to make sure the object fit is covered. So that'll cover the entire thing. Instead of only showing a part of the image, it will expand the image to, to cover the whole area as much as possible. And we want to make sure the image always located in the central. So we can give that object position center. And you save that. And now you're going back, you will see that image gets expanded a bit and uh, it will take the whole height and width. All right. Have that done. And then later on is that we know that when we hover the mouse on certain things, they're supposed to be in a background color. So we want to set that background color to each. So below the image, what we're going to do is the banner section. We're going to use a pseudo elements called after to set up a background, a background color. Okay. The, the way to do so is also going to be in a position absolute. This is the key line of code content empty because it's only a, a empty elements that hold the color. You don't have to write any text in it. I want to make sure that it sits on the far top and also a left of zero as well. I want to make sure it take the whole width of the parents component because we set the banner section as a position absolute. So this is a pseudo elements inside the banner section. It's also going to refer to the position of the parents component. So this width 100% will be the width of the banner section, right? Instead of the uh, the banner of the the body. Okay, it's not the whole screen width. Height 100%. I want to make sure it has a background RGBA. And that's going to be a semi-transparent white, 255 and 255, 255, tab, half. It's going to be 0.5, save. It's a, it's a white color, but we want to make sure it's semi-transparent over here, okay? And to have that blurry effect, we, have, we need to apply the blurry effect on the uh, pseudo elements. We say backdrop filter blur. So that'll give you, do not use the filter blur. The filter blur will blur the item itself. The backdrop filter is going to blur everything behind it, okay, underneath it. So we'll give that blur effect of five pixels. If you think this is not strong enough, you can just increase the pixels. That'll make sure, that'll make it even more blurry. But so far, I think this uh, is visible, but slightly blurry is cool enough. And then we want to apply the Z index of 900 to this pseudo elements to make sure it sits on the top as well. So you can see the image is 800 and this one is 900. And I will know that pseudo elements background color will be sitting on the top of that image, which is what I want. If the image overflows that pseudo element, we will never get to see this pseudo elements background because the image will sitting on top of it and cover it, right? So this is the logic. And once we have that done, going back, you can see that blurry effect already because each four sections will have that blurry effect applied so far. And the next thing is that we're just going to keep building the settings for each individual to enable the horror effect on it. And because the color of those things uh, of each sections are different, so I'm going to do the setting for each one individually. And we're going to say banner just below that banner section one, banner section dot one, on hover. And then on hover, we're going to make sure that the pseudo element after changes to a different color. So the background will be our second background. Because you have predefined those um, color in your root over here, that's why you can have this uh, thing to be used right over here. The second one is the pink one. So I'm going to use that one. But uh, if you saved it, going back, we hover on it. Yeah, it is turned to that color that we want, but it's uh, covering the entire image which is incorrect. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make sure it's opacity uh, to 0.6. So that'll give that kind of a transparent. You can see through it. Yep. So that one is done. 
And I'm going to apply the same kind of strategy to um, the remaining stuff. So for the second one, um, we say banner section dot two when it's on hover, and then that's for the element. I want to make sure it had a background color of the third one, which is the green one, and opacity of 0 0.6, 60% as well. Going back, so that one changes, this one changes, that one changes. And the same kind of thing applied to the third one. Banner section 3 on hover. Just uh, pay attention to the way that I access that pseudo elements on horror effects. It has to be written in this way for it to work. If you put the pseudo at the end, it's not working. And the, th the third one, I'm going to use the background color of the primary. And by the way, if you feel that the background color is not decent or not the one you like, you can totally adjust it to how you want them. So this one's going to be that. Going back to the browser, so this one all changing, okay? Except the last one, which I'm going to finalize now. Banner section four, hover, after, and that one is um, <coughs> going to be the background color of fourth, which is the brown one, orange and brown, and then the same kind of logic for the opacity. And then we're going back to the browser. Is there okay? But so far we have changed the background color change on the horror uh, events. But the, if you look at the original one, if you don't horror on it, the image should be hidden instead of showing off. So the next job is to handle the image hidden when the mouse is not hovering on it. Okay. So going back to here, and then for each section, we could actually uh, define a specific name for it. This is going to be uh, banner section one. Just to make sure that your layout is uh, clear, so you don't confuse yourself when you write your own code. So we put a comment there. So the one section one will always be here, and the section two uh, will be sitting over here. So later on, we're gonna expand this code a lot. There's a lot of uh, new animations, uh, new classes to be set it uh, for each of the banner section. So that's why we're gonna set up the structure clearly at the upfront. So now we're going back to the first section. And then below that hover effect, we're going to handle the hover effects of the image, right? So here we say banner section dot one on hover image. I want to make sure that image um, only when it's a hover, we want to show that image. When it's not hover, and the image should be hidden. So it's the opposite way of handling stuff. Originally, we have the image defined over here. To hide the image, what we probably want to do is to set the opacity of the image to zero initially, and then we want to make sure the visibility of a hidden set to it. Okay? So if we put, put on those two lines of code, that'll hide the image. Let's just save it to see if it works. Yeah, it works. Okay, you, see, you can see all the things have been hidden. All right? And to show it, we're just going to be written what is on hover. We want to make sure that the opacity goes to 1, and also uh, the visibility goes to uh, visible. So that'll make sure when you hover on the banner section, that image shows off. And you can see that image comes out. That one is not. That one is not. It's because we only applied it to that uh, section 1 image. To make sure it applied to all, um, what I want to do, instead of putting it in a section 1, we put it in the generic setting of the banner, because this one can be applied to all of them. We we'll just leave it in the banner. Maybe below the image is more appropriate. So this one not saying one. We're just gonna say banner section on hover is image is gonna be showing like that. So now if you go back, whichever one you hover on, you can see that uh, it's showing right over there. Okay, it's gonna be the same as what we can see over here. All right, move back. However, on a second notice, um, it's nothing wrong with the first three image. The last one is now showing correctly. On our uh, original project, this one should be showing um, the entire image, but this one gets hidden off. So it basically means that when we extend the image to 150%, uh, all of them get extended. 
but this one is also uh, uh, applying the same sort of effects as the previous three, but uh, ideally it should be sitting to the right at zero. So what I will do, I will adjust the last image only. This is a generic setting for all images, which is all good. But over here, I'm going to do a bit of a generic adjustment uh, for that last one only. So we say banner section four on hover specifically, and make sure that image uh, attached to the right at zero. And also we want to make sure it's left is auto, so it automatically adjusts itself. That's it. And now if we're going back, you will see that things shows it all correctly as what we expected before. Okay, so the image now has been done. And what's the next job? If you look at it, um, if, it, if your mouse is not on, on any images, nothing gets to show, which is really ugly. And also, the text is hidden. The text font has been hidden behind everything. We haven't defined that yet. Um, but what I want to do is that at least one thing should be activated, even though without a mouse on. See the original work? The first one has been activated. The first section of the banner is activated um, without any touchment. If I click on the second one, the first active status goes away and the second one gets turned on. We have to apply that active thing as well. And to do that, we cannot use this uh, CSS to control it. Uh, the CSS can only control the active status. Say for example, we can give an active class name to the first one and the remaining three does not have that class name. We can apply the CSS to the active class as well over here. All right, let's just try to handle if it's working that way. Give it a try. So what we can do, is that uh, in terms of the background, we're going to each one. Just add one line because the active status or the hover should have the same CSS effect at the end. So this one, I'm just going to copy that line, put a comma, and then paste it in. Change this word hover to dot active. This means that when the section class name one is on the active class, and then that pseudo elements background will be showing the same thing. Okay, so if I save that, I'm going back to the browser, you can see that one stay there because I have just manually keyed in that active words inside a class name. That's why this one has been turned down. The remaining are hidden, okay? So also I want to make sure the image gets to show as well. So we're going back to here, just put a general setting for the image, comma, put that in. Instead of a hover, we say that the section on active, the image will be showing as well. If we're going back, and you can see this one gets turned on already. And I want to leave it to be active. Because when the user goes to your banner or your home page, they're supposed to see something. If you hide all of those images away, the user is probably going to say, well, this is an empty white page. They're going to leave your website. Okay? We're going to leave something on to indicate the user that this is a clickable, hoverable, and you can just you know, try other area of the page. They will find a trick very quickly. Okay? And that's done. The next thing I want to give a bit of a definition. Um, is the uh, content. We, we want to make sure the content works, the button, all sits like this. It's, just, it's supposed to be shown on the top, and also the button have a bit of a hovering effect as well. So down here, we're just going to do that CSS definition here. So create a new comment by saying that uh, this is going to be the banner section content. And we comment it out. So below it, we say banner section dot content. So this is going to be accessing this part wrapped by the content, this entire thing. And in here we say position relative color. Initially we want the color to be in black, but the one that gets hovered will be in color white. And we want to make sure that thing stand at the top of all other elements. So they give it a Z index of 1000 to make it really high. And want to make sure the transition takes a half second. And also to make it align the central, we're going to apply the, the traditional combination of the display flags. Justify content center, align item center. So the three magical code will align item all in the center. And we save that and we're going back, this one. As you can see, that one sits in the middle already. Aligned all correct. And the last thing, we want to make sure that it has a bit of a gap. Gap 40 pixels. If you put on this gap, 
it put a gap between each element inside that uh, parent component. So in the content, the parent component, how many items does contain in it? We got two. One is the title, the other one is the button, right? So this gap will be applied between each element. This is a perfect way. If you use paddings or margins, you have to define on left or right. And you cannot remove the, the margin of the padding of the last one or the first one, which is always annoying. But this gap thing is really amazing because it only sits in the, in the gap between elements. Not at the top first, not at the last, okay? However, we want these things to be aligned vertically instead of horizontally. So what I will do here, this flex, and we want to put the flex direction to be column. So that'll make sure it aligns vertically. See, that button arrow goes below the title, which is correct. So now that's done. And then the next thing is that we want to make sure when this thing on hover, the color turns to white instead of black. So we can see the banner section hover content. And that one is going to be a color white. That one there. Let's see if it works. Yep, when it's hover on it, the title goes to black. It uh, changes from black to white, which is standing all correctly. All right, so the next thing is going to set the font for our title. So we say banner section dot content h2, which is our title. So we're accessing this part of the code. And then we want to put in that special uh, font family instead of the Roboto one. Using a special font family just to make your website have a, its own style instead of using all the generic stuff. And then we want to make it really, really large. So we say font size, 3 REM. REM stands for the root, uh, it's the root element. It's going to be three times of the root um, of that uh, font size. And then this is all going quite large now. So it's, it's a correct, and which is the same as our expected result. OK? I have that one done. And you probably want to uh, make it thicker as well. Mm, just give a font weight of 600, just in case. And uh, next thing is going to do with the button. So we're going to say dot uh, banner section um, dot content uh, banner button. We have a class name for it already. So to make it simpler, just say banner button. So that one there. Banner section, banner button. Uh, what we want to do is give it a border uh, of two pixels. I want to make sure it's a solid border and give it a black color. And I want to make sure the font is in black as well. And then it's going to be border radius of 30 pixels. And the next thing is going to be padding of 10 pixels on a vertically and also 30 pixels horizontally. Width, we want to make sure it's 150%, sorry, 150 pixels. And the text align, I want it to sit in the middle. We're going to make sure the font size is a slightly larger to 1.5 REM. And then we want to make sure the font weight is 500. And uh, we want to make sure the button has a certain margin to the top. So margin the top, we give it 50 pixels. If there's going to be any animations applied, I want to make sure that the transition takes half seconds to change. All right. So once we have that done, we're going back to see that thing's there. Okay. So the, this is the button, like a uh, rounded corner. It's a border with a rounded corner and wrapped it around. So the next thing is that we want to make sure that when this button is on hover, uh, it turns this to white. Otherwise, it's um, going to be unmatching the text. You can see. When I hover on it, the uh, the text font, the text color changes to white. Supposedly, the button should be changed to white as well. I'm going to do that. So we say dot banner section uh, on hover and the banner button color to white. And I want to say uh, border. So it's going to be two pixel border and solid, and also uh, the color is white. Or, or you want to use the border color, give the white color straight away, that's okay. 
And then when you hover on it, you'll see they both change to white. This one the same, this one the same, this one the same. All right? So we've done that part. It looks all nice now. So we have that done. And think about what's the next thing. Originally, when we hover on the button, it's supposed to move on the right a little bit. But now it's not moving. And also the alignment is incorrect. This one's aligned to the left at the start. This one's all aligned in the central. Well, aligning in the central is not a big deal. But uh, if you want to uh, make sure you align at the beginning, we can do that. Just to change the alignment of that uh, content instead of a central. Um, what we can do is that we can make sure it aligns um, at the start. Or actually make it easier. Align item, we say start. Yeah, that'll change. You see this one going to the beginning instead of central. Very easy fix. And to make sure when you hover on the button, it moves horizontally a little. What we can do is to set a hover effect to the button. And that's going to be banner section, banner button, on hover, transform, translate x. We push it away for 20 pixels, OK, on the, on the horizontal line. And when you hover on it, you will see that button moves horizontally a little by 20 pixels, OK? That'll make the user to know that this one is clickable. They are going to click on it. Right. So it's pretty much the, so far the CSS is done. And the next job is, how do we turn the active status on for all of those remaining sections? Because so far, the first one has been activated because I manually key in this active words inside the class name. I want to make sure that when I click on the second one, the first one will be deactivated, but the second one will be activated, and that background color and image will stay, like what we did here in the original job. This one goes away, but that one will stay. This one goes away, but that one will stay. Okay. This job is going to be handled by our JavaScript. So open W file, and then go into, uh, this is a lot of uh, catchings and temporary savings. Don't worry so much about that. We we'll just open up the correct file, the main.js. Make sure you have linked that file in down the bottom. And we're going to write our first function over here to enable that activation of the banner section. So we say that, uh, give a comment, switch banner sections. And down here, we're going to say uh, one way to handle the onclick events is that you leave a uh, onclick events uh, inside your DOM, the HTML file. But that's not the ideal way. The ideal way is that we separate the JavaScript entirely from the HTMLs. If you want to use any elements inside the HTMLs, we're going to use the JavaScript to select it. The same way that we have it selected in our CSS file. Okay. So we're going to say when dot add events listener. So we're going to say load. So when the page gets loaded, we're going to trigger something, right? That's going to be an arrow function after it. And inside it, we're going to do some selecting. We say select banner. We're going to select all the banner section and put them in the list. Banner section list equals to document dot query selector. Query selector is to select a singular element. Query select all is to select all the element with the same feature. Okay, so we use that. I'm just going to shrink this down a bit so you can see the whole thing. We're going to select all the elements with a class name of banner section and put them in the list. Banner section, don't miss the period. I have received a lot of comments uh, and also a lot of uh, messages from the subscribers. They say that the JavaScript is sometimes not working, uh, even though I key in exactly the same code as you. But in the end, if you look at the details, is that when you use the query selector, which is like the all capable selector, doesn't matter if it's selected by ID, by class name, you can use this to all of them. But if it's a class name, you must put a period. It's like how you define the CSS. Okay? If it's ID, you, you must put the, the hash before the ID name. It's not like you use the another JavaScript function called select element by class name, select element by ID. If you use those two, you don't have to put that period or the hash. You can use that name straight away. It's different. A teeny tiny change, you're probably going to make your code working. And trust me, uh, based on my more than 10 years web developing experience, 99% of the mistake are just typo. That's it. That's simple. Just typo, really. And uh, it's only the 
we human, we may we make mistakes. Computer normally do not make mistakes. Okay, so if it's not working, uh, just going back to see if it's any typos, or you want to look at a console to see what the message you got, and that'll remind you of the kind of error to to, to look to look at. All right, so that one is done. We select the order banner section. That's the first one, the second one, the third one. The fourth one. So basically, we select all of these and put them into the list. That's what it's called for. And the second thing we want to do is that we're gonna loop through this banner section list using the for each function. And inside the for each function, we want to make sure each section can be turn turn in and turn off. Basically, it can be um, activated and deactivated. All right. So for each section, we want to make sure that uh, we attach an uh, on click events to them. So we say section dot add events listener. What kind of events is that? That's going to be a click events, right? So on click, we want to make sure that we trigger a function. It is going to be an arrow function again, but we want to use that events property. And inside here, we say e dot prevent default because sometimes it will have a default click events, um, which is not ideal. So we're just going to prevent that from happening using our own. So we say default. Close that. Oops, I missed the arrow function. I missed that arrow. So put that in. Yeah, fat arrow. So this one's now all good. And we prevent that. And the next thing we want to do is whenever we click on a new section, this new section will be activated. All remaining things will be deactivated. So the logic here is for the navigation or for this banner, you always deactivate everything. You deactivate everything, or everything in the banner list, and then you find the one that you click on and activate that one again. Okay, this is the logic. So the first thing is that for all the banner section list for each for each of its elements, it's going to be an arrow function. We say that elements dot the class name. This is how you deactivate things in the vanilla JavaScript. We say remove a class name active. Because the only way to control is if it's active or non-active is by having this uh, active class name or not. We remove every all the ac active class name for each element to deactivate all of them. Okay, that's the first thing to do. And we found the one that you just click on. How do we find that? We use this. This refer to the one that you just click on inside the loop. This is also the vanilla JavaScript syntax. So this dot class name, we say add. We're gonna add a new class name of active to that one specifically. So now we remove the class active class name for everyone, and we found the one that you just click on using this, and then access the property class name, add a new class name active to it. Okay, and this is uh, how we're gonna do it. So once we've done that, we save it, and we're going back to the browser. As you can see. Uh, let, let, let me check if it's working now. Reload it. It should be working, and uh, it should be working, but uh, it's not showing for so far. It's because we done the active turn on and turn off thing, but we haven't uh, changed the CSS yet, right? So in the CSS, we want to make sure when it's on the active class name, the banner will stay at that background color, and also the image will show off. And so the way to do so is uh, let me let me just double check if I have changed it. We're going back to the image. Yeah, the image has been done. Uh, when it's on hover and when it's on active, that image is going to show. Let me see if that uh, banner has been done as well. The first section has been done. When it's on active class, the pseudo elements, the background color should be shown. Let me see if the second one is done as well. Nope, the second one is not done yet. So I was just going to do that. Copy this line. Here we say the second one on active, and I want to make sure when it's on active, the background color changes to the pseudo element as well. And the third one, copy this, and that one changes. The last one, so this one, oops, this one's supposed to be. This one's supposed to be active. Active. So now it has all been changed, 
right? So image have a, a active status and also the pseudo elements have an active status as well. So when we look through all of these, initially the first banner section has been uh, set to active, but uh, when we loop through all of them using this uh, for each function, whenever you click on any banner items, the class of them will be removed, the active class name will be removed, and the one that you click on will be add a active click um, active class name. All right. And we're just going to go back to see if it's working now. Uh, refresh it. And it looks like it's still not working. Oh, I, I figured out. Uh, the reason is because when you want to use the, this property inside the JavaScript, um, the, the arrow function is not supporting this. So we're going to have to use the traditional way to define that function by saying uh, function bracket e. So this one typically is the same as the arrow function I just wrote. But uh, when it comes to use the this property, uh, it only applies to the traditional function style because the traditional function comes with this. The arrow function does not um, have that built-in feature in it. So we just amend that and we go back, reload, click on the second one. Yeah, magically it's now working. Yeah, this one's working now. I leave my mouse, it should be working. Yeah, this one's working. This one's working, all good. So it's now been uh, turned on. Cool, that's one part of the things we have done so far. The next thing we want to fix is that when you click on the things, not only the background image and color should stay, but also the font should stay as white as well. But so far, uh, you have to put your mouse on it as a hover effect to show the white. If you leave your mouse there, it, it changes back to black. So we just have to do a bit of an amendment to that as well. Just going back to the font. And we, so far, we have defined when the section on hover is going to be a content color of white. And we're just going to simply add one line of code by saying when the section is on active, that one is going to be white as well. So say this is a very simple fix. So we'll just say this one is going to be active. So the font color should change to white. You see, that one stays white. If I click on the third one, that one changes as well. But the button color couldn't stay. It's because we have a different setting to the button. So here we say button, a section on hover, the button color is white. And we're just going to copy that by saying when it's on active, it's going to be a white as well. And that one stays, you see? I click on the second one, both color, button, the text font, the background image, background color, all stay as what it is without a hovering effect. So basically it means that our click events for the banner navigation is entirely working now, all good. And you can see that blurry, special blurry effects also apply to the background image with the image go beyond its own boundary slightly. And also in the boundary next to it, it has that blurry background effects. Really beautiful, huh? And the next part is going to be the button. When we click on the button, we're supposed to see a sliding door bendable effect, right? Like how we opened up the retail shop in the morning. And that thing is going to be a trigger of another active status for the entire banner. So whenever you click on the, the trigger button, the banner should be turned into another status, and that status will trigger the bannable effects in CSS, right? So what we can do is that I'm going to apply that status entirely at a super parents component banner. So when you click on the button, the banner will be add a class name of active. When the banner add a class name of active, we're gonna have a new CSS setting for that status as well, right? So it's just simple for the JavaScript, we just need to select the element, do the triggering of the stuff, but the CSS will eventually handle the kind of styling you want. So now here, we're just gonna go to the top of our banner, banner section, right here, where it says banner section, and we're gonna add a few settings for another active status. So if we manually turn on the active status for the banner, let's just say we add a class name active to the banner, and so we can define it here, by saying banner.active, when it's on active, we want to make sure that uh, it has that bannable folding door effect. But uh, they are folding in a different way. We have the, the first and the third slide, first and the third slide folding in one angle, and uh, the second and the fourth one folding in another angle. If you look at the original work, you will see, click on that one, the first one and the third one was folding in the same style, is uh, skewed in the same style. However, the second and the last one is skewed in the opposite way. Right? So we have to uh, make sure they do the right job based on their order. So what I will do here, the easiest way to say banner dash section, and we're gonna use this strategy in CSS called uh, nth child, numbers of child odd. Odd means that one, three, five, 
seven, that kind of number. So in our case, it will be one and three. So we're going to make sure it transform of skew. Uh, horizontally is zero, but vertically we're going to set it minus 35 degree. Okay. And we want to make sure when it's active, it has a box shadow. Forty pixels, RGBA. We're just gonna tap in. Okay, so now I'm just gonna expand it a bit to let you see the entire thing. So that's gonna be for the alt, which is the number one and the number three slide. When it's not active, it should be on that way. Let me just refresh to see if it's working. Banner section. Let's see what's wrong with it. Oh, I forgot to save the HTML. Because this one I put in the active, but I didn't save it. I saved it, and now it's turning, right? See, okay, you you have that uh, thirty-five degree skew effect, and just uh, gonna be changing this one. So I will copy it and paste it. And even even number basically means a two, four, six, eight, ten, that kind of things. So in our case, it will be referring to slide number two and slide number four. So it will set a uh, positive thirty-five degree. So that will make them look opposite, right? So when we go back, you will see that foldable effects are ready. But so far they are jointing together. The door is still not opening. But you, you already can see that the bendable effect, right? The bendable effects are ready. Pretty cool, huh? Even without opening the door, it looks pretty cool already. And with that shadow effect, like a real 3D door sitting in front of you. But now we want that door to open once we click on that, turn on that active status for the banner. How do we open it? We have to adjust the width. Previously, we have the section width of 25%, um, which will take one fourth each, one in fourth each. But now we want it to open, so we have to narrow down the width of each banner section. That's what we're going to do. So the next thing down below, when the banner is on active, we want to make sure the banner section to have a new width, and that new width is 15 pixels. So we reduce the the width by 10%, it's going to be 15%, sorry. If we're going back, now you can see that width gets shrinked down, okay? And the position is incorrect. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to reset the position of each. So that'll be banner dot active. The banner section number two, the first one is always correct because, because it's attaching to the far left. But the second one, we want to make sure it attaches to the first one, connected right to it. So I would say left to 15% because the width has now been changed to 15%. If you do that and you go back, you will see the second one gets attached to the first one, right? That one's aligning all correctly. And the third one, I will say banner.active. Oops. And the banner section dot three. The three is at the, f at the right. So we want to say that uh, it's going away from the right by 15%. And we set the left to auto. If you do that and going to three, it's sitting at the right position. The last one is incorrect. We're going to change it now. So I'm just going to be a bit of a lazy, copy and paste that. So this one, we're going to change it to four. And this one going to t attach to the right, far right. So it's going to be right zero. If you look at that, it's all correct now, okay? So when you open up the door, and these things will be sitting like an angle thing there, and that looks uh, like a, a genuine door opened up for the clients, for them to walk in the store, okay? Really, really cool. And also the next thing you want to do is, um, if you look at door now, it's so only the active way gets to show, even though you click on the second one, it's still okay. Uh, it's okay, but what I want to do is that I want to make sure when the door opened, basically means that your store start to operate. You want to make sure that all the slides get to show to the user to make it more colorful and dynamic. So what we can do here is to just to make a slight change by saying banner dot active <coughs> banner section image. We want to make sure that all image gets to show to the user and also visibility visible because previously the unactive image will be hidden. But now I want to show all of them. The width Previously on the full screen, the width is 150%, but now it's too wide when the door gets to open. I want to shrink down the width to 100%. Once you've done that, going back, you will see all the width gets to show. 
well, this actually looks much more beautiful. Yeah, much better, right? So the image gets to show and the horror effects still working. Actually, I, I prefer this one on the second design. In my previous job, when the door open, all the background color gets to show as well, and the hovering effects only apply to the text font and text color. But um, here, I think this one is better because with the blurry effects, only the background image gets to show. We do not turn on the background color. Well, either way, if you want to turn on the background color, you just need to write a few lines of code to add it on. But this one is good enough already. If you click on the second one, it's still working. The active changing stuff, right? This is done. And the next job for us to do is when the, open, when the user opened up the door, uh, it's supposed to see the content inside it instead of the uh, empty page. So far, it's an empty page. Previously, in our expected result, it's supposed to be in a paragraph with the content. This is just to uh, uh, make things simple. But if you do like to show some new stuff here, say some action buttons or some new images, or even a new card design over here, it's absolutely up to you. All OK. Uh, whatever you want to review, once the door open to the user, you can redesign it. But I just make things simple that we got something dynamic to design. This thing is dynamic. Because whenever you click on the, the first one, that thing will change. We click, we close this off, and we, we select this one. That thing changes to trousers. If I go to the, the last one, that thing goes to other accessory. The second one is a shortened jacket. You see, whichever one I click on, the, the middle content changes accordingly. So this is a dynamic, not a fixed or static content. How are we going to achieve that dynamic effects? We have to uh, keep building our HTML files down the bottom to create that dynamic middle content. Let's do that right now. So I'm going to shrink down the CSS file a little and do this one. We, we now we, cl we close off the banner section for now because we already finished it. Just below that, inside the banner, have to be inside the banner. But below that banner section, we're going to create our, our banner content. banner content <coughs> to review over here. And then inside here, we're just going to create a few divs. The first one is going to be div item. It's supposed to be we should have four uh, divs for the content. Each will be responding to each of our category accordingly. And we give a second name, which is called banner content dash one. This class name must match this one, data target. See, this one is a banner content one, and now you have the banner content one. That's how these two get linked up together. You know, When you click on the first item, and the first item's content gets to show, it's because you have that data target linked to that content. This is not a random name. OK, so must matching, just point it out. Close that off again. And then inside here, what we can do is a h1, and then it's pretty much the same as the, the previous one. I'm just going to copy and paste uh, sunglasses. And then below that, it's going to be in a paragraph of description. So I'm just going to copy and paste in that paragraph. It's a very simple thing. If you want to have your own design, say you want to put in more images, or you want to design a product card, or you want to add a new a button down here to allow the user to move on to the next stage is 100% up to you. Okay, I do not want to make this thing super complicated, and uh, we're talking about the entire structure though. So we have that one done, and to quickly do, I'm going to close off this one. I'm going to go into uh, copy and paste in the remaining stuff because you already know the logic of it. So to save some time of typing, I'm just going to copy and paste in the remaining four stuff. So now we have our. Uh, Banner content one, banner content two, three, and four. Each is responding to those four banner navigation accordingly. All right. So we have that done. Save it. If you go back to our browser, so far it's revealing all in the middle without hiding anything, but it's not good. And we do not have that close button yet. If you refresh, it's still on. That's because um, over here I manually key in that banner active. If I delete this word and save it, going back, it's all hidden up. Right, or behinding these things, but still incorrect. We have to fix a few CSS starting yet. But let me just put back that active. Okay, so in the CSS, we have to define this over here. So here we're gonna say leave a comments banner section content, or I'll be more specific on review. 
So this is when we review the door, when the, when the door gets to open, that we show these kind of things. Let me see. So that's our first one, our second one. Okay. Third one and the last one. We have four of those. Ideally, uh, what I want to do is that I want to uh, wrap these things inside a another div instead of just leave them there because it's easier to control. So once you have that all closed off, cut them and you create a new div, div dot banner content. banner content tab so inside that we're putting all the content stuff okay so we wrap them into another div that's easier to control stuff and then on our CSS we're gonna say banner dot banner content which is referring to this one and then item item referring to this is a generic class name applied to all the banner content because we're gonna have to do some generic setting for them item so we want to hide them because we do not want to show any of those things unless the door open so initially it's gonna be, it's gonna be opacity zero visibility hidden transition we want to make sure it takes one second and its position absolute I want them to sit in the middle and that's going to be top 50% and the left 50%. And we want to make sure it has a transform. Uh, when you put the top 50% and left 50%, it'll move to the middle um, of the page, but uh, only the edge of that element is going to the middle of the page. You have to align itself back to the central of its own position. So that's going to be going back by 50% and going back by 50% uh, horizontally and also vertically. You do that, this three line code will put that item uh, in a genuine central position when the position is on absolute. Okay? There's a different ways of aligning item. If the position is relative, you can use the display flex way to do so. Justify content center, align item center to make it in the middle. However, this is a position absolute. The flex display is not working. We have to use another way to centralize it. All right. And then we want to make sure that uh, item got a width of 30% of the screen width and give the padding of 20 pixel display flex inside it we're going to display flex and we want to make sure that the flex direction is on column because it's aligning item vertically and make sure that things got a gap of 20 pixels z index give it a 700 that'll hide it behind so now if you're going back that thing's gone away if we remove this two line of code and that thing's still going to be there but if you see, they are overlapping each other because it's position absolute. Position absolute allow you to put that item specifically at that position, right? So they are, so far, they are overlapping each other because we haven't triggered on the active status for them yet. That's why it's showing the four elements on top of each other. But you can see, after done this fill line of code, um, the alignment at least is all correct. Let's just uh, leave that on and finalize this part of the CSS and then we do the uh, good thing. So the next thing I want to do dot banner banner content item active so if the item is on active say for example I want to leave the first one on active we remove that uh, comment out we want to show that active item by saying opacity oh, 1 visibility visible once you put it back See, I haven't saved this one. Save the first that one as well. Only the first part gets to show, which is the head and sunglasses. The reason is because I manually leave that one active, so the active one gets to show. Okay, but later on, when we turn on the, on the JavaScript, this thing should be managed dynamically based on which one we click on. Okay, and we want to adjust that font for the title as well. So we will say banner. Dot banner content. Item H1. I want to make sure that's a font family is going to be the same. It's going to be the B. Cursive. Right. So we have to change the font size, font family of that. It's done. 
the next one is going to be the font size. We'll make it really large by giving it a three root font, three times the root font. I want to I want it to fit in the middle, so it's a text line center. That's done. And the next part, I want to change that to paragraph as well, which is the this long paragraph. It's like an item description. So we'll say that the font weight, 300. Letter spacing, one pixel. And letter height, uh, sorry, this line height, 1.5, make it space out. As you can see, it's now fully spaced out and not so crowded anymore. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much the setting for our uh, font text in the for our content text when the door gets to show. The next step is to trigger on the uh, active behavior using JavaScript. When we click on certain item, not only the background of that uh, slide will show, but also the content will show will change as well. And to do that, we're going to go to our JavaScript. So in our JavaScript, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to create a couple of functions to make things a lot easier. The first thing we want to create is the uh, um, activate the banner content function. So because we need a, um, a function to enable the activation of each item inside that banner content and swap them around. And I'm just going to give a name called the banner content uh, active. That one equals two. Uh, we're going to activate it based on the name of that content. The first name is the content one. The second one is the content two. So based on that, so it's going to be name. And inside here, we say that the const. First, we're going to select all the items inside that content one, two, three, four. So we're going to create a uh, a new variable called banner content list. That one equals to document dot query selector all because we're gonna select all of them based on the class name of item. Don't miss that uh, period. Uh, and again, I want to highlight again. Don't miss that period, okay? Because every element inside that banner content got that item class name. So once we say query selector all item class, we're gonna put these four item elements inside that content list. So that's the first job. Select all the things. I'm going to shrink down a bit. The second thing, once we select that, I'm going to loop through it. The banner content list for each. We're going to check which one is active now, which one is not active. But anyhow, we're going to remove all the active class name for this each element inside that uh, banner content. So we say content. Content dot class list dot remove. It's the same logic that we applied before. Remove that active class name, and we're gonna find the one we are looking at, and put that active class name to that one. So the next one will say we're using the if statement. If the content, this content refer to each of this item. We have four. We're gonna look through each of them. If the content dot class list contains that name that we pass in. This is how we do the matching. If it's on the banner content one, we pass in that banner content one, we check if that class list contains that name. If it contains that name, basically means that currently the user is clicking on the banner content one, and we want to show that one to the user only, right? So if that one contains the name, what we're gonna do, we're gonna set specifically that one active, okay? So we're going to set that one to active. So this is how we turn on the active status for the one that we click on. So we first remove everything, and we found which is the one that we click on. If we can do the matching, and then we turn that one to active. Very simple logic, right? So we'll give it a comment by saying that this is uh, the activation, activation of a banner content, okay? So once we've done that, we can pretty much do the uh, click events. The click events is when I click on this button, 
this thing should change. Changes according to the one that I click on. So down here, we're going to say a new window dot add events listener. We're also going to make sure that this thing works on the load, on the page loading. So it's going to be an error function inside here. Um, and think about which button that we click on. It's going back to our banner page in the banner section. We have that banner button, right? It is a banner button that we click on to trigger this activation of the banner content. Okay, so we're going to have to select it. Select all the banner button by saying const banner button list equals to document dot query select all. Don't miss that period for the class name banner button. And then we have to select the banner as well because when we click on, we want to turn on the banner's active class as well. So far, we just manually key in that active words inside the class list name. But this thing should be done by JavaScript. Whenever the user click on the button, the banner should be activated and open that door for the user. All right, so we select the banner. This is a uh, singular selection. So we use a query selector instead of a query selector all because we only have one banner. Don't miss that period. Query select a banner. So we've done that. So once we select all the items that we need, we can loop them through and trigger on and off that active classes. So we just say banner. For each banner button, we want to add the click events to them. So here we say btn. It's an arrow function. Inside of here, we're going to add a click events listener to all of them. Add events listener. This event is going to be click. And over here, we're going to trigger a function. This function got a built-in variable events. We're still going to use that. Double curly braces, e dot prevent default, because we're going to remove all the default behavior on click. And then we say that when you click on that any of the button, the banner should be activated, right? So banner dot class list dot add. We're going to add that active class name to the banner. Be very careful, don't trigger any typos. And then the second thing we want to do is the banner button list. Um, we wanted to make sure that uh, each button got an active class as well. And also we want to uh, show the banner content as well. Okay, So here we're going to say banner content active. We call the function that we just created over here. And the way to do so, how do we know the name of the of the item that we click on? If you look at that banner button that we built previously, each of the button got a data target attribute, and which contains the name. The value of that attribute is the name of our class name for each banner content. These two matches on purpose. Okay, so we're gonna use that to find the name of it. This is how we link these two together. So here we say the banner content active, and we're gonna pass in this dot get attribute get attribute close that brackets which attribute do we want to get data target right we're going to get the data target attributes and find the value of it get that so once you've done that this dot get attribute data target will return us this value it'll either be banner content one or banner content two three or four right once we find that name that name gets passed in over here as a parameter to the activation function of the banner content. And then the banner content will be activated. The remaining content will be hidden. OK, that's the logic. So we've done that. Get our attribute. Expand it a bit. This one now should be working. Let's just test out in the browser to see if it works. So back to the browser. <coughs> Currently, I'm hovering on a second item. If I click on the button, pay attention to the name if it changes, basically means that a click event is working. Click on it, it changes to shirts and jackets, okay? according to that one. The third one, click on it, it changes to trousers and shrouds. The last one, other accessories, all working. All right. So because now I manually add that active class name to the banner, that's why it always open, the door is always open. If I remove it, going back, the doors do not uh, be opening anymore. It should be closed off. But if I click on this button, the door is opening, you see? 
I refreshed it. I haven't built that close button yet, so I refreshed it to close the door. If I click on the first one, you see that door gets to open, and then the item in the middle gets to show based on the one that I click on. If I click on the last one, it shows the last one as well. This is all good, all right? So that's going to be all OK. But uh, ideally, we don't want to show any of the content initially. So what I will do, because I manually key in that active class name for the first one, I removed it for the banner content. Once I've done that, it'll be hidden behind the scene. Only I click on the one that I want to see, the door gets to open, and the content will be revealed. All right? So this is all cool and nice and nice. And uh, last thing I want to do, well, the last thing, the next thing I want to do is to uh, add on that close off button because we finished that banner content to review section and below it, we're supposed to have that close button. Otherwise, you have to refresh the page to close the door, which is not ideal. So down here, I'm just going to create a simple anger attack. But before that, I say close button. And down here, I say anchor tag, uh, close button. And uh, we want to look for the icon for close. Uh, that one looks good. So I'm just going to copy that one with a circle and put it in. OK, so we build an anchor tag and give the class name of, of close button and make sure it's uh, has that icon in it. So back to our CSS. We're going to do the starting for it. And just leave a comment by saying banner close button. Uh, period. We'll have to fetch that uh, class by saying close button. Uh, give the position of absolute. And we want to make sure it sits in the middle of the page. So left the 50%, transform, translate x horizontally. We we'll move it back by 50% on its own. And the color, black. Uh, bottom, 10%. And font size, 2.5. And opacity. Initially, we want to hide this button, right? We don't want to show user the close button when the user first come to see your page. This button will only be shown when the door open, right? So we're gonna hide it first and say visibility hidden. Transition time is one second. Z index is uh, one thousand. Once it's a show, we want to make sure it shows on the top. And the next thing is that we'll have to trigger on the active status of the button. This button will be active when the banner is active. The banner active means the door is opened, right? So when the door is open, the close button is going to be opacity 1 and also visibility visible. All right, so we have done that. I will be back to when the door is open, that one's there. And then when the door is closed, that one goes hidden. But so far, I haven't triggered a function of it yet, right? So we want the user to cl click on the close button and close the door of the shop. And to do so, we have to go back to the JavaScript and make further expansion to this part of the code. So here below banner, we're going to select one more element from the DOM. So that's going to be closed button. And that one equals to document.query selector. has to match exact the same name. Do not miss that period. And once we select it, we're just going to add an events listener to that one as well. Down below this uh, for each loop, we say close button, add events listener. It's going to be the onclick events. And inside it, we can do a arrow function. This time we can use an arrow function because I have no other things to do. We can make it simple. So e dot prevent default to prevent any default behavior, and then we want to make sure that the banner um, once it's closed, the banner's active class name should be taken off, and that's going to be banner dot class name a class list. We're going to remove that active. Oops, have to be in a string. 
Yep, that one is done. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it's working. However, I refreshed it. I click on the first one. The content gets to show the name is correct according to the first item. Click on the second one. Nothing gets to show. The name is matching. However, notice this. Pay attention to when I close it. When I close, close the button, the door shut down with no problem, but the content behind the scenes still live on, and that is because we never have a chance to remove the active class name of that content. This is where we have to handle it over here to hide the content whenever we close the door. How do we do that? We're going to write a new function and call it hide banner content. We have a new function here and I call that function over here, right? You don't want to wrap everything inside one big uh, function. You want to separate them out. This is easier to control. In the old stage, when there's a no React.js, the vanilla JavaScript is the only way to build a web page. Um, and this is how we write functions in the old stage. So far, we have a more advanced way of building web app. But the vanilla JavaScript is still something that you must know and learn because you need this foundational knowledge to be able to move on all of those fancy frameworks like the React.js or Vue.js. They're all based upon the JavaScript foundational knowledge. If you know nothing about JavaScript and you start off the React.js directly, it is strongly not recommended. Not recommended, right? You have to learn the vanilla thing first to have a, a very good understanding of how the JavaScript work before you move on to the framework. Okay. A lot of the uh, programmers um, in their middle career found it very difficult to make any further. It's just because they learned the code in a very unprofessional way, and a lot of things when they go into the senior role, they don't understand at all because they started from the wrong position. They don't have a decent or solid knowledge of vanilla JavaScript. So when the things getting complicated, they are unable to solve. They're relying on too much on the framework. The framework can do the things it's trying to save our time, increase our efficiencies. But the framework actually simplifies the process of a lot of things. If you encounter a bug on the problems, vanilla JavaScript has more ability to solve it. The framework is going to trap you in that way. So it is recommended that you familiarize yourself with all of these things before you move on to the React.js. So we're going to hide our content by running a new function by saying a const banner content hide. That one is going to equal to another error function. So this, these two are opposite to each other. So this one is uh, activating that banner content. This one is going to hide it. So what we're going to do, we're going to copy this line again because uh, we need that item. And we're just going to write a for each. It's going to be banner. Uh, content list, that one there. We're going to write a for each loop inside a for each loop for each content. Uh, very easy. For each content dot class list, we're going to just remove that active. Okay, so we're going to loop through every element inside that content list, which is every item. And on your HTMLs, you will know that each item referring to each of these. Um, here. This is your first item, the second item, third item, and the last item. Okay. So each item referring to these, we're going to hide them. So we're using that for each to loop them through. And for each of them, the class list will re remove that active class name. And once that name is gone, this content will be hidden because we hide it using the CSS. When it's active, it's visible. Initially, without active, it's going to be opacity zero, visibility hidden. Okay, so that's how it works. One last thing for us to do is to call this function at a certain stage. So when that one gets uh, closed off, when you click on the closed off button, not only we should uh, um, remove the active class name from the banner, but also we call banner content hide. That's it. We don't have to tell which one to hide. We we'll hide them all. Okay, so this is an easy one. Just hide them all. Save that. Going back to the browser, and you click on one of those. Click on the close button. You see that one hide off. Click on one of those open button. This one opened up, and close it again. That one got hidden up. All right. So now it looks pretty pretty cool, huh? It's like that you're opening your real, uh, physical, offline store day by day, and every day you want to just uh, show the users, uh, hello, I I opened up my shop. Please come in and have a look. And then I closed off my door. Right. So some people like to make my initial version to add the background color when the door is open to all of them. It's okay. 
you just need to do a few CSS adjustment. When the banners are active, you want to make sure the background color gets to show as well. But uh, on the second thought, I do prefer to leave it like this because that's more obvious to show the user which one you're currently clicking on. The one that has the color on it and also has a text font in white. Okay. The remaining stuff still have the hover effect to handle it, but it has a beautiful blurry image background sitting behind, which is cool already. Okay. So now that one's done. All good. Even though with the door open, you can still changing, swapping the content. That has no problem. See? Okay. One last thing for us to add on, you, you can do it or not, uh, it's up to you. It's the social icon, so I'm just quickly gonna add that one. So over here, I'm just gonna copy and paste in that social icon thing, which is very simple. Above that close button, we say social icons. Comment that out, make it larger, paste it in, give a class name of SCI, stand for social. And we need the meta, the Twitter X, and also the Instagram. And over here, the close button, and we say that uh, social, social icons. And also uh, very quickly, it's a very simple CSS stuff. I'm just gonna copy and paste in and explain a bit for you. Paste. So I'll say that uh, we'll make sure it's sitting at the bottom of 30%. If that's the case, it'll be here. Oh, so far it's hidden, sorry. I have to turn off that hidden thing to show you. It's there. Um, if you do not want to sit it at the bottom, you want to put it on the top, that's also gonna be okay. You could say top. Maybe let's try 20%. Yeah, it's sitting over there. It looks all decent as well. Doesn't matter where you want to put it. And <clears throat> the reason why I hide it is because the social icon is supposed to be shown to the user um, when the door gets opened. Right? So if you hide that door, nothing should go gone away. Okay? So what I will do, the key thing for us to handle is that we need to hide these things when the door is closed and show these things when the door is open. And that's a JavaScript as well, okay? So we leave this one back on. Leave this one back on. And we just have to add a few more things inside here. Down below, the close button, we're gonna select a social as well because we're gonna handle the hide and show the on and off events of it. So const sci equals to document dot query selector We're gonna find that SCI class to fetch it, don't miss the period. And inside here, when we click on the each button, we want that thing to be shown off. So the banner should be put on the class of active and also the social as well. SCI, the class name, we're gonna add active to that one. Because in our CSS, we do have that function. The social icon initially was hidden but when it's active, we're gonna show it, right? Very simple toggle. And also, when we close off the door, we want to remove that active class name. So down here, we say SCI dot class list, remove. We're gonna remove that active when we close the door, right? This, this click event is attached to the close button. This click event is attached to the trigger on button. So we have to add it to different places. And then going back to the browser, click on, nothing gets to show, close off the button, that the social icon got hidden away. Right, it looks all nice and decent and beautiful. Very, very cool, okay? So in today's project, we have pretty much finalized these things. And one last uh, changement that I want to make is this uh, logo. So far, it's uh, a white, a uh, black one. But what I also want to do is that to make sure it has a uh, dynamic color. Because initially, when you first load a page, is uh, the first section we'll be showing with a background color on. However, the logo ideally should be in the white color to, to be more beautiful. And when you move on to the next one, the logo should be black because the background color changes to white. How do we make that logo dynamic in the vanilla JavaScript? We just have to set a class name for it, okay? And then we're gonna change that um, CSS a little bit onto the logo. The logo is over here. We're just gonna have to add a new logo features to turn that on and off. 
So down below we say logo white, color white. So we define a new color for the logo, and we want to add that uh, class name to our logo as well because initially we want to show it white. White. And going back to the browser, you see that one's white. The white has a sufficient color contrast with the background pink. Okay, but the problem is when you go on to other sections, so as I click on the second one, the logo disappeared. That's because it stayed at white. So there has to be the JavaScript function to turn on and off that white, that white class name when we move on to other sections. And the proper place to add it is in our JavaScript file. Ideally, we can add it over here, this one. So down below that uh, banner section list for each loop, we're going to do a new thing, which is to uh, toggle on and off that uh, logo. So the first thing we're going to have to select that element from the DOM. The, the logic when you build stuff with vanilla JavaScript is that you always need to select the element first from the DOM and then handle that element's behavior using vanilla JavaScript. It'll either be adding the uh, events lesson to it, uh, click events or um, input events, whatever events you want to have, but you've got to have to select the element first. So document dot uh, query selector, not all, just single one. You're going to select the logo, don't miss the period. Once you select that one, we're going to handle it. So for each button section, when we click on that, we have this thing done, we have this thing done. So down here, after we uh, add and remove that uh, active classes for the banner, we're going to do that for the DOM as well. So it should be down here. If we write a uh, expression, if expression, uh, we want to see if we currently on the first slide of the door. If we are on the first slide, the logo should be in white color, right? However, if we are not on the first slide, the logo should be on the black color. So this is going to be a checking. If this dot class list dot contains contains what one, that one two three four in the class name is what we use to separate them out. If we are on the first one of the banner section, the logo color should be white because that will have that color contrast, right? Otherwise, we want the logo color to be black. This is the logic. If it's on the first one, <coughs> then we say logo dot class list. Add one, add white. That's that, and else on else we want to say the logo dot class list remove white. Okay. Let's see, there's a tiny syntax error. Oh, that bracket there should be the one over here. OK, that's all good. So when we loop through each of the sections that we click on, we want to see if we're currently on the first one. If it's on the first one, we want to make sure the logo class name contains the white. Otherwise, we remove the, the white from the logo's class name. And once you've done that, you're going to the second one. You see that one goes to that one goes to black, the third one black. Only if you click on the first one, the logo will change back to white. All perfect. All right, so that's pretty much all we have done so far. So to wrap up today's project, today we have built a, uh, a simple project. It's just a fashion website banner page, but it's a quite interesting and creative and useful for you. And we learned quite a lot of things. Uh, we learned how to use JavaScript to handle those active classes and select the DOM elements. This is all the vanilla JavaScript without relying on any third party libraries We achieve these things, OK? And also, we have learned heaps of CSS styles, how to handle images, how to handle background, how to use pseudo elements, all of those things. How do we deal with the positions, like position relatives and position absolute? What are the differences between them? How do we handle paddings? Uh, and how do we handle Z index? All of those things. Okay, so that's our today's project. So far, it looks all good. And I know that I haven't shown in this video the responsive design. I'm not going to show that. Uh, if you want to have the full copy, of the source code, you can purchase it on my online shop. The link is down in the description. Or otherwise, it is good enough to have a practice for you to do it on your own. And I'll just give you a quick tip, you just have to type in here at media array. And the one that I use is uh, max width colon 
768 pixels. So inside here, you just need to rewrite your responsive code uh, that will override the code above. But uh, the hint is, um, on the vertical screen, I show you the original work. If I turn on the mobile, it's going to show differently. Because on the full screen, it's showing that full division horizontally. And on the mobile screen, it's going to show that full screen vertically. But how are you going to change that? It's very easy. Instead of making the width 25 pixels, height 100 pixels, you make it the other way around. You want to make the width 100 pixels and the height 25 pixels and make all of those changing accordingly, right? That's the key things. You don't have to touch JavaScript again. The JavaScript will remain the same, regardless of which screen you are on. And for this one, to make sure you open the on and up, on and off, and our full screen one, the doors opens horizontally. On the mobile view, the doors opens vertically. It's the same logic. Instead of using the positions on the, horizon, on the uh, horizon way, you can make the position on the vertical way. It's just a tiny bit of adjustment in your CSS code uh, to achieve this result. And also, don't forget to change the paddings to make things look more decent. All right? OK, that wraps up some pretty much all the stuff we have covered today. Hope you have uh, enjoyed this project. And if you do like it, please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. And I will see you in the next video to show you a more exciting and creative project. Thank you all for watching.